Welcome back to the Technivers channel guys. Today we are going to be taking another look at Prusa Slicer. It has been a good while since I have taken a deep dive into this slicer and I have always really really enjoyed playing around with it. Since I have tried it last there are quite a few new features. So you can see here that after setting up the initial version uh, I am presented with a couple of options here and it is going to allow me to open the tutorials, visit prusaprinters.org, and open the sample models. We're going to go ahead and let it do all three of those things um, because I want to take a look through them, but I have Prusa Slicer right here. We're going to open that separately. Um, so here is the new user guide. If you're new to Prusa Slicer, this is something you should definitely check out. There is a lot of detailed information in here, um, basically for Prusa printers. This is not for... Uh, say your cruelty and stuff like that, but if you are Very attentive you can glean the things that you need from most of these videos on their printers um, Let's go ahead and see what else they sent us here um, Because Prusa Slicer is updating at the moment, so here is our Prusa 3d folder and in here there are some samples and when you install it lets you decide which samples to pick and I did take a couple of sample objects from a couple of their printers so we can open them up and check them out when this guy is done updating here so um, one of the things you need to note if you're going to do this is there are two folders sample G code and sample objects so in the G code is actual pre sliced G code files um, and those can go straight onto the printer but they are made for these particular printers, the MK3 and the MK3 MMU2s. MMU is multi-material, and with this particular update to Prusa, there are some new additions to that multi-material options. So um, I don't have a Prusa on hand. We're going to be working, I believe, from the TiVo Tarantula Pro today. So let's go ahead and go into the sample objects. We will, you know... I've never printed Joe. I don't see him in here though. So we'll take a look at this Prusa one when it opens and see if. Oh, here we go. Alright, so files. Pretty simple. Drag and drop. Let's grab the STL here. Uh, it's basic Prusa logo. Pretty simple. Um, that's one of their Prusa. Prusa. I always mispronounce it. I'm trying to get it right. Um, there are also 3MF files in here, if you see. So let's see what that does. So Prusa actually prefers 3MF, and you might notice in the future that 3MF is definitely the way to go because um, the thing is, you get a lot more robust information from a 3MF file than an STL file, and they're pretty compact. So. Uh, if you go to the Prusa site where they have their repository, you will see most of their files are suggested to be printed in 3MF. So let's try... Let's see this. Hey, look. A whistle. Uh, JP initials on there. Not certain that this whistle would work because there's no ball in it. But one of the features that they added this time is a excellent uh, pause at layer height setting. So um, there's some custom G-code settings in here. This is the start and end for the printer. We're looking for, I believe, print settings, output options, change the output file format there. Um, okay, so now that we've got our Prusa Slicer open, I'm going to go ahead and get a printer set up. So we need to uh, go up here and I actually have my TiVo T Pro in here. That's amazing. Uh, this all looks pretty accurate. We're going to take the extruder down to 210 and the bed down to 50. Cooling is on. Okay, so um, I still have this original Prusa Mini platter here. 
Uh, and there was a new, let's launch the configuration wizard. They have a new option for a lot of custom printers. So if you go to custom printers here, go to define a custom printer profile. Working in Marlin. Actually, uh, maybe we'll do a Creelty today because if you look in other vendors, they have the Creelty machines. Um, so Creelty FFF, this is the Ender 3. And I actually like when you select this guy. I'm just going to hit finish and skip past this. Um, it updates the build plate and gets rid of that Prusa mini build plate. Um, and now we are where we need to be. So let's go look at print settings, layers and parameters. If you look in here, one of the newer features that they have added is a variable layer height. Let's see, where did they put it? Um, and this, this minimum shell thickness uh, you're going to want to set if you're using that variable layer height. That way your top and bottom end up coming out properly. Um, there is a lot here. make sure it's in the right version we are so uh, if you didn't notice this slicer is based on slicer slicer which is uh, kind of fallen by the wayside especially since Kira or uh, Prusa branched off from it and started developing this they've kind of got their own thing going here so um, let's get a model in here okay there's a nice castle model and let's check out some settings. So printer. Okay, everything's set there. Supports doesn't look like it'll need any. Um, the other thing is when you do, they have a sequential printing option. I just want to talk about this real quick because as you see, there are two models here. I know we'll print those in order from top down. They are easy to drag and drop and change. So let's get rid of the castle. I actually really like this gear bearing print. Um, and let's slice it just to see how it looks. All right, so here we have the preview. Um, and you can scroll through it. Uh, this has one of the smoothest preview modes that I have found, actually. I really enjoy Prusa Slicers. <clears throat> uh, see, this is curious because the way this file is set up, it's slicing with 20% infill on the main cog wheel here, but the outer ones are getting 100% infill. So um, that's nice that you can adjust those settings accordingly. Um, so if I wanted to add a filament change, uh, you hit this plus button right here and it'll allow you to change the color and you can actually right click on that color and change it to whatever you want. You can do this multiple times throughout the print. It will pause at that layer, let you change the filament and things like that. Uh, if you have that MM MMU capability, you can make it do this automatically, which is pretty cool. Um, Let's add another color change here. So if you're building something that is a multicolored or multi-filament design, this makes it a little bit easier to just right click, or excuse me, left click on this plus. And if I wanna take this one off, I can just delete it um, or go ahead, it'll pop right to the next one. I can delete that one as well. So pretty simple. Um, there are other scripts that you can add in here. Uh, such as timed pauses for inserting magnets and weights and things like that. Um, basically, Prusa Slicer is where it's at. I mean, I, I love Kira. It's very nice and everything. There's lots of settings, but Prusa Slicer has a lot more customization. It is a slightly faster print, to be honest, than you'll get out of Kira for the same model. 
Um, they did upgrade their pathing, which means that there is a lot less travel going on. And I was actually looking at one of their videos before starting this to see some of the new features. And I just wanted to show this real quick because I found it interesting. Um, so let's scan to, where was that pathing? Bear with me now. There it is. Okay, so this is their pathing before in 2.1.0. This is their pathing now, okay? Um, Kira still sometimes makes crazy leaps across like this. This is smart enough to go in order and not waste time traveling all the way to here and then back and then here. Um, that's a lot of wasted travel time here. So this is an immense improvement. Um, that's basically gonna be it for this quick update, guys. Um, Prusa Slicer is definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. Uh, they are <laughs> very, very stable. So if you go to the GitHub, you can get an unstable version, the latest version with all the new features. But their release version 2.2.0 that is available for download on their website, whatever version they show there is usually really, really stable. And I found little to no bugs. I mean, they test things really, really thoroughly and they have a very large community of people willing to test it with them so that leads to a more well-built end product so that's going to be it for this video guys thanks for stopping by we'll have more prints from this session of prusa slicer coming up but for now we're going to cut this video off because it's getting a little bit long so don't forget to leave a like down below hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments what you'd like to know about prusa slicer or what features in particular you are curious to learn about thanks guys